Hey everyone and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help out our channel and it also helps us reach others who want to test their math skills with these types of test questions. So this will be our 38th part in this particular series. And what we have going on this one is that we have to determine, ooh, come back here, we have to determine the red area shown inside this region here. And we are told that this entire outer shape of ABCD is a square with eight centimeter sides. Point O right here is the center of the semicircle shown in blue, which has a radius of four centimeters. So it aligns perfectly with our edges at A and D. And we are also told that P down to B is tangent to the semicircle. And then C to Q is also tangent to the semicircle and they intersect at point Z. All right, so <clears throat> looking at what we have here, we can determine some things right off the bat. So, since this is a semicircle and O is our center and the semicircle has a radius of four centimeters, we know right away that this OP is four centimeters and this O to Q is also four centimeters. So what about PZ and QZ here? Well, from the tangent line theorem, we can determine that PB is equal to <clears throat> A. B. Since we have tangency coming down to here and tangency over here, PB and AB are equal in length. And anytime you have two tangent lines intersecting at a point outside of your circle, those lengths are going to be equal. And you can say the same thing for our CQ and DC. So that means that since this is a square, that means that CQ is also equal to CD, which is equal to eight centimeters in length. So we can apply the tangent line theorem to the smaller lines of PZ and QZ once again, because, well, we have tangency here, tangency here, and they intersect at point Z. So that means that PZ is equal to QZ. We don't know what those lengths are, so we have to find them. Now, how do we determine the area of this kite region here? Well, anytime you have a kite shape that has two right angles in it, and this will have right angles in it, since we have tangency here at these points, <clears throat> and we have two sides that are equal accompanied with another two equal sides, the area of this kite is going to be quite easy. So the area, since we have the two right angles, and PZ is equal to QZ, and OP is equal to OQ, the area of this kite just becomes OP times PZ, like such. So we know what OP is, it's four centimeters. So we have to determine what PZ is and that's what we're going to be looking for. So let's work on getting that. All right, so let's apply some information here and do some stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're going to extend our tangent lines and we're gonna add some new points here. So we're gonna add point E up here and then we're gonna extend, extend this tangent line as well. And we're gonna add a new point of F down here. So we are going to let PZ be equal to an X length, which also means that QZ will be equal to that same X length. And then we are going to let PE be equal to a Y length. So PE will be equal to Y. And since we have the tangency in the lines that we said earlier, e, or FQ is also equal to Y. <clears throat> so, what we have going on here is that we are going to have to determine what this X variable is. Now, what is this value from E to C and what is this value from B to F? They're gonna be equal, but what are they? Well, looking at what we have here, well, we have point D, point E, and then point P up here. Well, this line from E to P is tangent and DE is also tangent. So using the tangent line theorem that we proved earlier, or that is proven that we used earlier, since EP is Y, this value up here will also be Y, and the same thing down here for A to F, because they are tangent lines intersecting outside the circle, they will be equal in length. So what that means for E to C is that this is essentially eight minus Y, because we have eight centimeters in this thing, uh, side down here, eight minus Y for B to F. Alrighty, so let's fill in one last length that, we, or that we're going to need here. So what is CZ and what is BZ? Well, since CQ is eight centimeters and then PB is eight centimeters, 
Well, this would be just eight minus X, and this would be also eight minus X. And where did that eight come from? Well, it came from our determination of the tangent lines earlier. <clears throat> so we have this set up here. Let me scroll up just a little bit more. So we have this set up right here with all these variables. So how are we going to solve? Because we're actually looking for X. That's what we need here. So, what we're going to do is we're going to use some triangles inside here. We're going to use a right triangle and we're going to use similar triangles in order to solve. So we're going to use the right triangle here of E to C to B. <clears throat> and we're going to use Pythagorean theorem. So from this triangle B, E, C, we're going to use Pythagorean theorem such that we would have this long side of B, E squared, which is our hypotenuse is equal to E, C. E C squared plus B C squared. So let's just plug in our values and variables that we have here. Well, B E is going to be these three added together. So it'd be Y plus X plus eight minus X squared is equal to E C, which is eight minus Y squared plus B C, which is a square. So it'd just be eight squared. So the X is actually drop out of this part. And then we are left with eight plus y squared is equal to eight minus y squared plus 64. So let's go ahead and square out these. So we end up with 64 plus 16y plus y squared is equal to 64 minus 16y plus y squared plus 64. Well, a few things drop out here. Well, the 64 is going to drop out from each side. Y squared is going to drop out from each side. We'll take the minus 16Y to the opposite side, and we end up with 32Y is equal to 64. Thus, Y is 64 over 32, which gives us 2 centimeters. So what that means is this portion right here is 2 centimeters, and same thing down here. Well, it doesn't really help us for X, but it or doesn't give us X, but it will help us solve for X. And how are we going to solve for X here? Well, we just use the right triangle to get one variable here of y. And now what we're going to use, we're going to use similar triangles here with this first one up here of E, C, Z. And then we are also going to use this bottom one down here of Z, F, B. Due to the tangency and the placement of the square, these are going to be similar triangles forming here. So what we can do here is that we can equate that B, Z, this length from B to Z is going to be equal to E, Z. This length up here using the similar triangle formulation. So let's plug in what we have here. Well, B, Z will be eight minus X and E, Z will be Y plus X, which is essentially two plus X. All right, now we can solve for X here. So this would just be six is equal to two X Thus, x is equal to 3 centimeters. So what that means here is that this x is equal to 3 centimeters. Well, that's what pz is equal to. If we scroll all the way back to the top, we know that op is 4 centimeters, pz is 3 centimeters, and that would be our overall areas, just multiplying those two together in red. So my area in red for that kite shape would just be 4 centimeters multiplied by three centimeters, which gives us a nice answer of 12 centimeters squared as our area in red there. And that's how you would solve that particular problem. <clears throat> so I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned a new math scale along the way. And if you want to test your abilities even further, please check out the other videos on our channel. Also, if you've done so already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below and subscribe to the channel because all of that does help us out. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.